Today, I want to tell you about a time in Israel's history when they renewed the covenant. I'm going to read to you from 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 17, where we read this. Then Jehodiah made a covenant between the Lord, the king, and the people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. After many years of terror and chaos, the kingdom of Judah was starting to follow God's ways. The wicked queen Athaliah was deposed and dead, and the true king, King Joash, now sat on the throne. He was only a boy, and it was critical that he have wise and godly advisors, and God gave him a wonderful guide, Jehodiah, who was the high priest. Soon after Joash was put into power, Jehodiah did something important. He, as we read here, he made a covenant between the Lord, the king, and the people. This formal agreement, called a covenant, was made to make clear the obligations that the king and the people had to the Lord God and to make clear the obligations that the king and people had toward each other. Now, in a sense, this was unnecessary because Israel had already made a formal covenant with God centuries before in the time of Joash and Jehodiah. You see, in the days of Moses, again, centuries before this, Israel made a covenant with God. You'll find it in Exodus chapter 24. But this covenant really was necessary to renew because Israel had fallen so far from their covenant obligations to God that it was just good for them to once again commit to honor, obey, and serve the Lord. What I really like about 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 17, is that it reminds me that our relationship with God is also based on a covenant. It is the covenant that Moses and the people of Israel made with God at Mount Sinai. Now, it's not that covenant. Our covenant is a better covenant. It's a new covenant. On the night before Jesus went to the cross, he told his disciples that his death, he would institute a new covenant. That's in Luke chapter 2, verse 20. This was the covenant that God promised in many wonderful passages in the Hebrew Scriptures. You see, the new covenant so much better than the covenant mentioned here in 2 Kings. This new covenant concerns an inner transformation that cleanses us from all sin. Jeremiah chapter 31 says, For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. This transformation puts God's word and will in us. Jeremiah 31 also says, God promises, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. You see, this covenant is all about a new, close relationship with God. Jeremiah 31 also says, I will be their God and they shall be my people. In the days of 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 17, the covenant was made in the presence of the high priest and the king for the people. <laughs> Aren't you glad that Jesus is both our high priest and our king? Now, you can't make the new covenant. Jesus already made it through his sacrificial death, but you can receive it. And in a sense, you can renew it. You can once again recognize how great the new covenant is, how much you need it, and how wonderful it is to receive and relate to God on the basis of the new covenant. So when you read about this covenant that Jehodiah and Joash and the people renewed before the Lord in 2 Kings chapter 11, let it stir your heart to think about and to appreciate the glorious new covenant that you have in Jesus Christ. Remember that today.